I know this will come as a shock to a lot of people watching this video, but according to official statistics, Nigeria is not the largest music market in sub-Saharan Africa. When I found this out, I too was surprised, so I decided to dig into the data and here we are. I'm going to go through some of the official data with you, then I will dig into some of the reasons why Nigeria is not the largest music market in sub-Saharan Africa currently and why it hasn't been historically. Buckle up, this one's gonna be a no BS version. First of all, how did this intel come about? I first came across it when I was reading the 2023 IFPI Global Music Report, which is widely regarded as the source of truth when it comes to music stats in the digital age. I also included this data and a screenshot in the last video I did about why African countries are failing to match Nigeria's current music success on the global stage. To corroborate the data, my first mission was to find out what are the actual figures behind the market size in Africa because the IFPI reports didn't really give that data. All that report really said was growth in sub-Saharan Africa was boosted by a strong climb in revenues in South Africa which is the region's largest market and they had a 31.4% growth in 2022 versus 2.4% growth in 2021. I'm sure Amapiano had a part to play in that because that 29% bump in growth exceeded all expectations. In fact, the projected compound annual growth rate or CAGR for South Africa for 2021 to 2026 was expected to only be around 7.3%. They 4 x that. Impressive. Well done, South A. For everyone's benefit, in a case like this, you want to compare apples to apples between the various countries and markets to understand the differences. Challenge accepted. Here is the key data that I'm going to present to you. For this comparison, the PwC Africa Entertainment and Media Outlook report groups music, radio and podcasts as one category. I need to stress that all three are put together and it makes sense in the context of data collection seeing as radio for example has played a huge part traditionally in royalties for music and then podcasts as a, an audio medium playing their part recently in the last few years. So in terms of the most recently recorded revenue in music, radio and podcasts in 2022, here is the breakdown and I added Kenya in there for additional context. In 2022, the Kenyan music, radio and podcasts category made a combined 134 million US dollars. In Nigeria, that figure was 182 million US dollars and South Africa was number one in Africa with 347 million US dollars. That alone tells us revenue wise South Africa is absolutely crushing it and they've been doing it for a while now. Interestingly when we look at the entertainment and media industries in those respective countries Kenya's industry is about 2.5 billion US dollars worth, Nigeria 8.9 billion US dollars and South Africa at 9.3 billion US dollars. I found that quite interesting. Historically, South Africa is kicking everyone's butt when it comes to the entertainment and media industry. At no point has Nigeria led in this regard in sub-Saharan Africa but it wasn't even second on the list up until as recently as 2019 when it overtook Kenya. If you want a reason, then I have an answer. This is football heritage. Nigeria's recent dominance, and it's huge by the way, doesn't diminish the musical heritage of other African countries such as DRC, Kenya and South Africa that have done amazing things continentally and internationally over the years. Here's the key thing with this data. Consumer spending on recorded music and royalty collections in South Africa are significantly higher in the country than any other market in the region. They have established credible and sustainable systems that benefit creators in the industry better than any other African country. 
higher digital sales, rising smartphone penetration, and the rollout of several international streaming services all point to why the music market in South Africa continues to grow as it has and it being the leader of the pack in terms of revenue. So the question becomes, where does Nigeria fit in on this? Nigeria is actually the fastest growing music market in Africa and has been for some years. It is forecasted that they have a uh, compound annual growth rate or CAGR of 23.7% until 2026, which is ridiculously high and equally impressive. So like they say, Niger no go carry last. This explains what we feel and see with Nigerian music, the impact of Afrobeats and the global stars that Nigeria has produced such as Burna Boy, Wizkid, Tiwa Savage, CK, Yemi Alade, Davido and more. That exponential growth is real, but it needs to continue for a while and the right structures need to be put in place within Nigeria's ecosystem to allow for the money to flow to the music creatives and the industry at large more evenly and equitably. Other things also have to happen with the Nigerian economy to curb poverty and increase consumer spending over time because that really counts. To go a step further, let's look at some of the reasons why South Africa is the largest market in Sub-Saharan Africa and not Nigeria. First of all, major music labels globally have been in South Africa for decades. Take Universal Music South Africa for example, a division of UMG, was founded in 1997 in South Africa a whole 26 years ago. In comparison, Universal Music Group Nigeria was only founded in 2017, which is 20 years later. Sony Music Entertainment has long had offices in Johannesburg and Cape Town, established since the 90s, and only opened a Nigerian branch in 2016. This is football heritage. Another factor is that Nigeria has a huge piracy problem. According to a study by Sunday Namani published in the Journal of Educational Studies, Nigeria has the largest market that infringes on creative intellectual rights on the continent. Within this market, about 80% of international music and then 40% of local music is pirated, which is crazy. And because so much music is distributed through illegitimate channels in Nigeria, no wonder why these factors block profits for both musicians and their recording labels. In turn, when the revenue numbers do come up, obviously that black market revenue is not going to be captured anyway, because it's not flowing through the proper channels and the music industry at large does not benefit from it. This factor also supports the next point, which is Nigeria has underdeveloped digital infrastructure compared to South Africa. What the data from the previous point suggests is that other segments of the music market are underdeveloped due to piracy and all other issues. The level of digital infrastructure and internet connectivity plays a role in the differences between the music market revenue um, between the two countries. The accessibility of digital platforms for music distribution and consumption, especially in 2023, significantly impacts revenue generation. And the knock-on effect continues feeding into the next point, government policies and industry regulations. What you need in the modern music industry is good government policies, copyright enforcement, the law might be there, but if it's not enforced, it's as good as useless. And industry regulations that uh, con contribute to favorable uh, economic conditions for music. Efficient music licensing, royalty collection systems, and anti-piracy measures really help generate more revenue for the industry. And right now, it plays to South Africa's hands much more than it does to Nigeria's. Adding to the list, consumer spending and royalty collections. I touched on this point earlier, 
that South Africa has world-class structures in this regard, which makes it easier for money to flow to and within the music and entertainment industries. Now, this last point, I really wanted to make it because it adds additional context to everything. Looking at live music and event revenue. Live music is an area where Nigeria currently outshines any of the African countries and this is the diaspora pool I've been speaking about in the last video and you see this going back to 2020-2019 Nigeria has been killing it in live music and event revenue. Nobody's touching Nigeria in how they've harnessed their diaspora influence and numbers to make money from live ticket sales out there. This is why we've seen just about every major act from Nigeria touring this year, for example. Adekunle Gold has been on tour. Burner Boy is on his second tour currently in as many years. Ira Star on tour. Wizkid uh, on tour. Davido. 2023, these artists have been touring and Nigerian artists have been at the top of that, doing festivals and everything else. And although this touring revenue has been captured, it's still not enough to eclipse what South Africa is doing on the music revenue front in totality. And this makes for an even more interesting discussion, I think. For a bit of fun, I thought it would be interesting to find out how many US dollar millionaires exist in South Africa compared to Nigeria as a way of trying to gauge how far this success extends outside of music and entertainment in particular. This is where things got even more interesting. First of all, the richest man in Africa, Aliko Dangote, is Nigerian. So Nigerians get that. But according to Statista, South Africa is home to the highest number of US dollar millionaires in Africa as of 2022. And the country has over 37,800 high net worth individuals corresponding to roughly one third of the total number of US dollar millionaires in Africa, the continent as a whole. Sheesh. Second in rank is Egypt, which counted 16,100 high net worth individuals. And then Nigeria comes third with 9,800 high net worth individuals. And then Kenya and Morocco occupying slots four and five. Bruh. That adds more juice to the debate. So South Africa comfortably has more number of USD millionaires than Nigeria does. And that's about four times as many. So for all the dominance Nigeria has been showing us in the last, let's just say 10 years, they still have a lot of catching up to do. And what this really tells us is that recency bias can be a thing just because of how successful we've seen Nigeria be and especially music as the fastest growing uh, music market currently. It becomes harder to acknowledge and give credit to the other countries that have been doing this for a long time and are successful in music when it comes to revenue generation. Above all, one statement captures this entire video in a nutshell. Nigeria is Africa's largest music market by population and the fastest growing. However, South Africa is Africa's largest music market by revenue. So what do you think? Let me know your thoughts about Nigeria not being Africa's largest music market by revenue and leave your comments below. Do not forget to follow the channel, like the video and share it with your friends. Otherwise, that's it for me. My name is M. Jomoto, son of Zimbabwe, signing out. Peace. Day day. Very dangerous.